is as with just about every other case of do, of studying these genes and making not mo knockout models of mice with studying these genes is look at is to examine if it's um if it is a therapeutic target or is yeah. it related to a therapeutic target right but then you can just well, take it's a not only a therapeutic target but also like in general what exactly is it doing well okay but that no but that goes with therapeutic okay. target like you can you can answer those questions by targeting it yeah, yeah I, so, I, I, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, so so what? So the question then is not well. How can't why is not to just take a the this, the way to answer that that I'm proposing is not to take a human and, and make a knockout model of a human. It's to just target it. Make is to just target the um, target it in a human. Well, right? how would you target it if you don't understand? Well, we do. What do you mean? We do that all the time. There's there's all sorts of there's all sorts of um, therapeutic targets that we can make antibodies to. We can make antisense RNA to. Uh, we may not under we may and we may not understand what the outcome is, but that's the purpose of the study. And then we we observe the humans where they have this target, where they have the therapeutic target inhibited or amplified. I see what you're talking about, but I feel like that could end really badly. So yes, so so it could end really badly. It also could end very well. And the 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 thing here is, so the ways it so the ways I grant the risk that it could end really badly, of course, and that's why it's research. That's why we start with phase one clinical trials instead of jumping to phase three. The, yeah, I, I see it, what you mean. I just I wouldn't feel comfortable with certain like with certain testing certain things on humans. Well, the th here's the thing. Like, there, here's the 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 problem that you're that you may not be realizing on the other end. The when things don't work out in mice, um, they may very well work out in humans, and we may just deprive ourselves of something because of that. So, we may just say, okay, this was a problem in mice. We're just going to cut the project. Or this didn't work in mice. Well, cut the project without going to phase one trials. We don't feel comfortable with it, and then we've just sentenced all the humans that are dying for something to death. Well, I, I, I see what translation rate is. Out of curiosity, do you know any examples of how of that happening? Yeah, um, here is a here is a systematic review of that happening. Here, I'll post it in general. Because I could also imagine the opposite being true. Like we find no, something bad both and true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, both and both things. The problem, is, the problem is yeah, both things happen. Uh, but both things happen. The the problem is the rate at which it happens in each direction is very is so similar to each other that yeah. it's almost not worth the resources. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. I still think that mm -hmm. animal models are important. I just don't see how if they're like if they are approaching like a 50 percent well arm. because i feel like if for all of those times that things go wrong in mice and they do go wrong in humans i mean if even there's a little bit of a buffer despite the fact that sometimes it doesn't always work out that way if there is a buffer for that i i would what do you mean buffer? I would, well like let's say something causes is extremely i don't know freaking lethal in mice and it ends up being lethal in humans i would mm -hmm. rather us know that in mice and not go forward with human trials okay but, but we're, not gonna, wait, we're not going we're not going to know that in le if we don't go forward in human trials is that's the whole point because like the fact that it's lethal in mice doesn't tell us it doesn't inform us very well that it's going to be lethal in humans i get what you i'm get i I understand what you're saying. What we're doing I'm is we're like precaution. on the off chance that it is, I would yeah, feel more comfortable with that. Yeah, but that's but that's a preca wait, but then but that's a precautionary move. That's not the same thing as epistemically being justified in the view that it's going to be lethal in humans. That's just to say, well, it's lethal in mice, so that we just don't feel comfortable doing it in humans. Um, but in reality, if the if the probabilities are really just non-informative, if it's lethal in mice, that it's going to be lethal in humans, then it's really just a waste of money. 
In fact, there are many examples that I can give you of things that cause cancer in mice that don't cause cancer in humans. Um, well, yeah, I, I know that. I know that. I'm not saying that mice are the same as humans in any shape or form because they aren't. Yeah, but it's uh, not the point there. The, the point is just that um, the, the point is not that mice are different from humans. The point is that they're different to such a degree that the observations that are being generated, it may make you feel uncomfortable to do something in humans, but it's really not that informative to answering questions in humans. Um, and to what de whatever degree it is, it's counterbalanced heavily by the harms it causes by us taking these precautions. We, uh, I, I shudder to think what the uh, potential uh, cures we would have for all sorts of diseases if we didn't have this model. Yes, there would be more human deaths, but the point is there would be human deaths in phase one trials. And that we, we would also have f a far more advancement of medical technology if we didn't have this. The requirement for passing animal trials is actually insane because of that. It, it, it has probably hampered medical technology to an insane degree. Um, and whatever deaths would have happened, yes, whatever deaths would have happened would have been limited to the to phase one trials. Yeah. And we, we could even but, but even we could even redesign something and do a phase 0 0.5 trial, you know, or something like that, where there's like more precautions taken to for the safety of the humans and whatnot. But the point the point is here that is just imagine all the technologies that we could have had that never even got the chance to be investigated because of this false belief that if something uh, 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 because of how exaggerated the utility of animal testing is. I'm going to read through the systematic review that you just showed me, and I'm also going to do a little bit more digging into this myself, because I am kind of curious, like, more on the other side as well. I will say I still do think that they're, the precautionary is good to have, just because I've had people who've been in phase one trials, and I would hate to see them die. So it's like, I see why... It doesn't have to be phase one to be clear. Like there could be other types. Like there could phase be like one, phase zero point. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's what I'm like. I'm you can there are other ways of taking precautions other than hey, it didn't work in mice, so let's just abandon the entire project, right? Yeah, I can see that. I I will say like it just I wouldn't um. I still do think that a precautionary. Measure right, it's a precautionary bad. measure, but it doesn't have to involve animal testing is the point. Like, there are ways of making precautionary measures that don't involve requiring... So how would you say... So how would you make the precautionary measures? Yeah, so um, it's, look, it's this very similar way to which we already make precautionary measures. There's a reason we test pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in phase one, um, and then efficacy in phase two before we go to phase three. It's just, we could do a similar type of model, just ex just amplifying it, just expanding it. So we can do a phase 0 0.5, where we just take a very, uh, where, we t where we take a very heavily safety-based approach with testing a medication on humans, where, where most of the most of the resources, instead of testing it on animals, are just invested in into the safety of the human subject. And then we're just measuring the, the same things that we would measure otherwise in animals in those in those human subjects. That that would be an example of precaution. Are you using instead of wasting the money on uh, the animals, we would we would use it on humans and then we would we would take this resources and use that for, for safety measures in humans. And at least the answers we're getting, we could be more confident on because we're actually studying the right fucking species. So. Um, that would be one example of a general approach that we can take. Rather than just cutting the entire research. And what happens if in, let's say, phase, you said 0 0.5, right? Yeah. So what happens if in that early phase 0 0.5, it kills all of the targets? Yeah, no, if, no, if that happens, if, if something like that happens, that would be informative. Now, I've never, now, you know, if something... Obviously, you would, you, you would do a titration, and so it would have to be a very, that would be a very rare thing to happen, like, especially if you're titrating up. Um, I'm not aware of, like, it would have to be something that has, like, a very, very low LD50. It would have to be something that kills at extremely low concentrations. Look, it's possible. I think it would be extremely rare for that to happen, 
But if it would happen, it would be a terrible thing. I just don't think that the fact that something can happen, that it's a terrible thing, makes the overall model less preferable. Like, these things happen currently. Like, these things can, can also happen with animals. Like, you can have something that goes the other way, that it's falsely safe in mice, but is actually pretty very harmful to humans. And it gives you a false sense of security because it passed the test in mice. And then it's even worse because now, now it's harmful in phase one instead of phase 0 0.5. So the other, the uh, reverse concern is also an issue. Because now if you have something that gives you a false sense of security in mice, well, guess what? Now more humans are going to die in the phase one than the phase 0 0.5 with less precautions for safety. So that that's just going to be a concern about people dying in research. People being harmed in research. That that's a very that's a very age old concern. I mean, yeah, that that is a concern and there are safeguards you can have. But the safeguard really there's no real the point is that there's no real evidence that mice research is a good safeguard. Oh, I may have lost. We may have lost her. Yeah. Oh, are you? Are you? Uh, are you there? Yep. Yeah, yeah my no. connection is really bad. I'm sorry. I just got. No, no. Can you hear me now? Am I good? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, so the point I was just making is that the reverse consideration. You can have the reverse consideration. So there are cases where things are actually safe in mice, but very harmful to humans, and. If you have something that's safe in mice and harmful to humans, it gives you a false sense of security in research. And then you go to phase one, and now more humans are going to die than if they were in phase 0 0.5. So the point is just the, the point is just if you you can you can levy a theoretical concern in my model, but I could just levy the same theoretical concern to even a greater degree potentially in your model, in the mo current model. And then all right, that's fair. That's very yeah. fair. And and so the point the point is is that this is really just going back to an age old concern about research in general, which are harms of research. That's the same concern we've always had. And there yeah, are, safeguards. and then it's just like, it goes in circles. Yeah. Yeah. The, there are safeguards, but the point here is that there's really no good case that overall animal research is a good safeguard. And there's really no good case that any prelim preliminary research in humans is going to be like super safe. Well, yeah, but I just think preliminary research in humans is a better indication than preliminary research in the wrong species. It may not; it may still have risks. I mean, I grant that. I grant that it still has risks, but how informative those risks are are at least going to be being generated from studying the correct species that you're trying to extrapolate to. I'm just saying this based off of like we had a um, last the last semester there was a medication that was given that quite literally killed every single one of the mice and mm -hmm. i could just imagine that happening in humans and that would probably be really no, no, really there's, bad there's going to be safe like i imagine you i imagine they didn't just start titrating up from zero with the with the dose i imagine there was like a set dose no that no happened. it was a very small dose no 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 i didn't ask if it was a small dose or not i asked if it was titrated up from zero yes it was Oh, and then all of a sudden, when one dose was hit, all the all the mice died. That would be very interesting. Like that would be a very yeah. Nice it was well. It was it was over time. It was fatal anorexia that killed the mice. Okay, so those were things. Wait, but then those are things. Then there would be adverse events that could be detected. It presume even assuming if that translates to humans. Yeah, that's true. I mean. Yeah, it's it's very it's very rare to just like okay we titrate up from zero and then all of a sudden everyone's dead like yeah thing. yeah like that that's incredibly rare um, I don't even know if you like I wouldn't even expect that with cyanide um, so yeah I mean the point be able is able to see side effects at first yeah that yeah. makes sense yeah anyway so that's the point the point is that just like there's really no there's really no good case that animal research is more of a safeguard than a harm guard um you know it gives it can give research a false sense of security that things are harmful uh that things are safe when they're really harmful it could also give it also often gives uh researchers a false sense of harm when it's actually not harmful and sentences people with certain conditions to death because 
um, the research is just cut and it doesn't go forward, when in reality it should have. Um, and so what proportions those happen in are just something that's trying to be answered to some degree by that systematic review that I posted. And yeah, overall, I'll, I'll make sure I'll yeah. make sure to read through it. Um, yeah, and, the, and I'll, the I'll do a little more research into yeah. it myself. And the point is that in almost every case, they're they're either they're not they're either fifty or close enough to fifty where the overlap, like the uncertainty, the overlaps with fifty, such that it's really just it. One questions if it's even worth the money. It's just like what, and not just money, but time. Like the resources that go into animal research are not just money that could have been used otherwise. It's time that could have been used otherwise. Yeah, there is a lot of time that goes into it. I will do my, I'll do a little bit more like digging into it. I see what points you're bringing up. I still do think that there is a argument that is to be had for animal research, but I will do more digging into that other side because I do think that it's worth the time. Okay, well, I'm going to go walk the dogs, and uh, I think Isaac wanted to chime in about some other stuff. All right, go ahead, go ahead Isaac. If he's still here. Oh, I don't know if I... You might have to ping him. Because what did he say? He said... Honestly, I low-key have to go, too, because I have a really early day tomorrow, and I've got my surgery in two days, so... I'll probably be seeing yeah. you guys this weekend anyways. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your foot, right? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Get those Thanks. bunnies. Good luck with the bunnies. Yeah, oh boy, it's going to be crazy. Anyways, it was nice chatting with you. Yeah, for sure. All right, see you this weekend then. See ya.